One of my most treasured possessions, or I should say was one of my most treasured possessions, was a book called the Draper's Encyclopedia, which dated back to the late 40s and early 50s. And inside, it told you everything you need to know about selling clothing, and in particular, silk stockings, because the book was written at the time when silk stockings were being superseded by nylon stockings, and the way it was written was just fascinated, fascinating. And over the years, unfortunately, it's been lost. But a couple of weeks ago, Richard, my husband, found, had this amazing find on eBay, and I was totally obsessed with it. And I didn't really expect anyone else in the company to be that interested. And I thought, oh, it, they'll think it's just Katie going off on one again. But when I came downstairs, everyone was totally obsessed and reading it all the way through and found it totally fascinating. So this rather um, plain looking book is really a treasure trove. Inside, it's a documentation of the brand Gossard. It covers 1935 right up to the 1960s, and it includes their advertising campaigns, the information about their new products, and also a training guide. So really, it covers everything. And it's, you know, it must have been owned by you know one store who had been going for you know at least 30, 40 years and carried Gossard all the way through. And this is their manual of the Gossard brand for all of those decades. It starts off with the advertising. So in here we have the artwork. And of course, this is obviously pre-digital, so you'd have cut and paste artwork. And they'd supply the brand with all the artwork. The prices would be left blank, so the brand could put, or the shop could put their own price in. And this is, this is the advert that they use to put in their new, local newspapers and magazines. And there's a little bit about advertising saying that if the, if the shop wants to advertise and use their artwork, then by approval, Gossard will pay half and the shop will pay half. So there's a lot of artwork like that. One of the things that is really interesting about Gossard's lingerie in the 40s and 50s is that although they do traditional soft cut bras, they also do an awful lot of cathedral style bras. And I don't actually have any vintage Gossard in my collection. While I wore the brand in the 90s and 2000s, I don't have anything further back than that. So I've just picked out another piece from my vintage collection to show you what a cathedral a cathedral style basque would look like. One of the things I keep saying in my videos all the time is very limited cup sizes in the 40s and 50s. As you can see here, it's available in A, B and C cups. And they also do a lot of overwired styles. And that when they do those, it's this is A and B cups. In fact, in this whole this whole brochure or catalogue, ring binder collection, um, I can only find one D cup in here and this goes right up to the 60s. So the cup sizes were very, very limited. And this goes back to why, why we're limited when we recreate uh, vintage pieces. They weren't designed for larger cup sizes and it's, it's very, very difficult to make them in larger cup sizes. I do have a really cute overwide bra here, and this is actually a triple A. It's it's so cute, but it is completely padded. It is, I mean, that was that will stand up on its own. And this is my own vintage overwide bra, which I still wear today, which is beautiful. It's an original Hollywood Hollywood Maxwell Whirlpool bra, and I forgot what it was there. So it's, it, this is an original Hollywood Maxwell Whirlpool bra, and. I know a couple brands are and have done reproduction over wide bras. Dita Von Tees did one as part of her, and I'm pretty sure it was Gossard that she teamed up with for her first lingerie collection. She did an over wide bra, which I bought and I sent back because it really wasn't as good as this one. And now Playful Promises make uh, over wide bra, which again, I do have, but I don't wear because I prefer the fit of this one. I'm a 34C and it's, I say it's fairly easy for me to find vintage pieces. When I first started 20 years ago, yeah, it was easy for me to find vintage pieces in my, in my size. Obviously, if you're any larger than a C cup, you have got no choice other than to go for reproduction. And um, yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to wear a Playful Promises one then. I, I try to stay away from strapless bras just because I don't find them that comfortable. And this is why I find it quite amazing that all the way through they're, they're pushing strapless bras as like everyday wear. And I'm like, 
you know, I, I only wear one if I, if I really, really have to. So as well as the overwire bras and the cathedral type, type bra basques, they also do a more traditional underwire basque, which is more similar to our Glamour Merry Widow. And so that they make a, a thing about it cinching and being able to attach your stockings, which is exactly the same as what we do today. My favourite part of this book is actually right at the back. And not only did Gossard send you all the advertising material and keep you up to date with their new styles and what kind of figures they fitted, but you could actually send your employees to the Gossard Training School. And this is um, information from 1937 and 1938, where an employee was sent to the Gossard Training School. And I'd love to have gone there. It just sounds absolutely fascinating. But this is, I mean, this is how seriously... They, they took it, and you have to remember that back, that back in the day, it wasn't like you walk into a lingerie shop and you pick out the piece and you purchase it and you go on your way. Most of the pieces back then would have been in, in cupboards. Everything would have been presented in boxes, and you would have gone in and sat down, and a salesperson would have measured you and decided what item suited your figure the best, which sounds intimidating to me even even today so you'd have someone decide what your problems were and how to fix them because all the way going through this book it's very much about waist whittling and making you look a, look a size smaller it's not about accentuating what you have it is literally about making you look smaller than than you were than you are naturally so the salespeople though they would have been daunting to go and sit in front of, especially if you, you were a teenager going for your first bra or your first girdle, they would have been very highly trained. And they're, they do like eight hours a day for five days. It's on Monday, they arrive at 9.30 and they visit the local Gossard stores. Then they have an outline of the programme and then they get a brief, of foundation, brief about foundation garments at 1.45 and 3.30 to 5 is actually fitting garments. And then it goes on Tuesday, Wednesday, they have fitting practice. They have Gossard advertising person come in and talk to them. They have the designer come in and talk to them. That literally every day they have at least two hours fitting, the salesperson themselves fitting on real people. They're shown how to fit by a Gossard expert and then they're, they're left to their own devices. And there's a little bit here where the employee comes back and talks to her her bosses about her experience there and she says well Monday was taken up with lectures on anatomy lectures on corset making and fitting lectures on selling with us trying to soak it all up and take down notes to use later she says right there I discovered how little I had known before I went in though my work had gone along pretty well Monday bought a fine banquet followed by a perfectly beautiful display of the entire Gossard line on living models, from the most beautiful youthful figures you can imagine to the larger mature figures on the fitting of which so much stress had been placed. When I saw these lovely models and even the well-proportioned larger ones, I thought this fitting job tomorrow is going to be a cinch. And her boss says, I take it somebody upset the apple cart. Did you get a surprise? And Miss P says, did I ever? After some preliminary instructions the next morning, the actual fitting began, and I wish you could have seen the models they gave me. They were a caution. Really, I wouldn't have believed women could get in the shape they were in, but they were, and there was a gossard for every one of them, and I had to figure out which gossard. Did I have cold chills? But somehow I managed it, and I'm happy to say that they gave me a diploma to substantiate my claim that I got through all right. Otherwise, I would not be too sure of myself, now that I think back. And they say, they say they are taught there are seven different figure types. Slender, heavy, full hip, tall, average, average, short average, and straight hip. And my models were exaggerations of all of these types which, had been taught, which we have been taught to measure correctly and analyse or diagnose for needs. It's interesting the way they write, because obviously we wouldn't, we wouldn't write like that these days. And these days it is more about accentuating what people have as opposed to dealing with their so-called problems. But... But that's the way it was back in the day. This was in 1938. And I mean, even today, when, you, when I put someone in a corset and you see, and they just look so amazing in it and you can see their faces light up, fitting someone 
in lingerie and making them feel good about them themselves really is really is a great feeling. Mrs. Plotz returned from Gossard School in Chicago, February the 5th, 1938. So I'm sure Mrs. P and her fitting in the actual shop when she went back to work would have found her training invaluable in being able to practice beforehand and in, in private before being, being let loose on the general public. I'm going to continue looking through my Gossard book and I'm going to pick out the best bits and get them scanned and put them on our website. So if you check out our blog, you'll be able to see everything in more detail and, and study it for yourself. In the meantime, take care and I'll catch up with you soon.